Do servers hold one website only? As from what I understand the DNS linked the domain name with the IP address of the server the website is stored on, does that mean each server can only hold one website? If they don't, how does calling the server's IP address know which website I want if there are many on the same server? Basically, the browser includes the domain name in the HTTP request, so the web server knows which domain was requested and can respond accordingly. HTTP requests. Here's how your typical HTTP request happens. The user provides a URL in the form HTTP column slash slash host column port slash path. The browser extracts the host domain part of the URL and translates it into an IP address if necessary in a process known as name resolution. This translation can occur via DNS, but it does not have to. For example, the local host file on common OCs bypasses DNS. The browser opens a TCP connection to the specified port, or defaults to port 80, on that IP address. The browser sends an HTTP request. For HTTP 1.1, it looks like this. The host header is standard and required in the HTTP 1.1. It was not specified in the HTTP 1.0 spec, but some servers support it anyway. From here, the web server has several pieces of information it can use to decide what the response should be. Note that it is possible for a single web server to be bound to multiple IP addresses. The requested IP address from the TCP socket. The IP address of the client is also available, but this is rarely used, sometimes for blocking slash filtering. The requested port from the TCP socket. The requested host name as specified in the host header by the browser in the HTTP request. The requested path, any other headers, cookies, etc. As you seem to have noticed, the most common shared hosting setup these days puts multiple websites on a single IP address port combination, leaving just hosts to differentiate between websites. This is known as a name-based virtual host in Apache land, while Nginx calls them server names and server blocks and East prefers virtual server. What about HTTPS? HTTPS is a bit different. Everything is identical up to the establishment of the TCP connection, but after that an encrypted TLS tunnel must be established. The goal is to not leak any information about the request. In order to verify that the server actually owns this domain, the server must send a certificate signed by a trusted third party. The browser will then compare this certificate with the domain it requested. This presents a problem. How does the server know which host, website s certificate to send, if it needs to do this before the HTTP request is received? Traditionally, this was solved by having a dedicated IP address, or port, for every website requiring HTTPS. Obviously, this becomes problematic as we start running out of IP4 addresses. Enter SNE, Server Name Indication. The browser now passes the host name during the TLS negotiations, so the server has this info early enough to send the correct certificate. On the server side, configuration is very similar to how HTTP virtual hosts are configured. The downside is the host name is now passed as plain text before encryption, 
and is essentially leaked information. This is usually considered an acceptable trade-off, considering the hostname is normally exposed in a DNS query anyway. What if you request a site by IP address only? What the server does when it does not know which specific host you requested depends on the server implementation and configuration. Typically, there is a default, catch-all or fallback site specified that will provide responses to all requests that do not explicitly specify a host. This default site can be its own independent site, often showing an error message, or it could be any of the other sites on the server, depending on the preference of the server admin. I have this explanation for non-tech people. Jack, Jill and Joe live at a dormitory, and they don't have cell phones. In the phone book, they are all listed with the same number. A record. You dial the number, and somebody picks up the phone, you say I'd like to speak to Jill, and you get her on the line. Instead of an A record, a phone number slash IP address, in the phone book, it may just say dormitory X, then you must look further for the number for dormitory X. This is a C name record. If Jill is not available, you might get. Four hundred and four Jill is not here. Four hundred and ten Jill is dead. Three hundred and one Jill is moved in with Peter. 302 Jill is visiting Peter, call him instead. 400 I can't understand you. 401 who are you? What is the password? Or we don't allow mail callers after 10 p.m. 402 payment required, are you sure Jill is her real name smile? Four hundred and three no, that is not the right password. Four hundred and eighteen Jill is a teapot smile. Four hundred and twenty nine Jill can't take any more calls. Four hundred and fifty one you are violating your restraining order. Five hundred our phone system has broken down. As from what I understand the DNS link the domain name with the IP address of the server the website is stored on, does that mean each server can only hold one website? First, you need to understand that there are a number of distinct concepts here. Website, a group of web pages that form a coherent whole. IP address, a numerical address, 32-bit for IP4. 128-bit for IP6, used by the internet protocol as the source or destination for traffic. Server, a machine whose job is to serve requests from clients. Hostname, a name used to identify a machine in DNS, for example www.example.com or n.wikipedia.org. There is not a one-to-one -one relationship between any of these things. One server can have multiple IP addresses, multiple hostnames can point at one IP address, one host name can point at multiple IP addresses. Multiple websites can be under the same hostname. One website can be spread across multiple hostnames. If they don't, how does calling the server's IP address know which website I want if there are many on the same server? In the old days, HTTP 1.0 and before, each hostname that the server wanted to handle differently had to have its own IP address. This was rather wasteful. HTTP 1.1 added the host header as a mandatory field in the HTTP request, ERC some vendors had previously supported this as an extension. This told the server which hostname had been requested and hence allowed it to serve different content for different hostnames on the same IP address. Support for HTTP 1.1 in clients is now ubiquitous.
Unfortunately, SSL, later TLS, added a wrinkle. Establishing a SSL slash TLS session requires the server to present a certificate to the client that covers the requested hostname, but the HTTP request doesn't arrive until after the SSL slash TLS session is established. It is possible to have one certificate cover multiple hostnames through the use of the subject help name field or the use of wildcards in the common name field. However, this poses administrative challenges, especially if the hostnames involved are under domains with different ownership. So TLS introduced the server name indication, SNE, extension. With this extension, the client sends the requested hostname to the server during the TLS handshake procedure. The server can then present the appropriate certificate. Unfortunately, while current versions of all major SSL slash TLS implementations support SNE, it has taken a long time for older versions to fall out of use. The answer is a bit more complicated than some of the answers have made it out to be. When you perform a DNS lookup you must get an IP address, a record for IP4, AAA for IP6. You have to be able to open a socket over TCP IP to communicate or the whole thing fails. That address may represent a server or it might represent a load balancer. It could even represent a proxy. If the host is behind Cloudflare, for instance, the address you get is of a Cloudflare server. The real server is somewhere else. This lets the host avoid problems like denial of service attacks. Virtual hosting is what you're asking about, some of the other questions touched on this, but not in any detail. Virtual hosting takes the web request and looks at the host name, i.e. domain.com, to determine which website to serve up. So in the Apache HTTP web server you would have a configuration like this. This is simplified for example. So we're telling Apache to listen on port 80 of any IP, in modern virtual machine hosting your machine's IP may be different from its live IP. We then tell it that this is the, domain.com, website and what directory that website lives under. We can then repeat this block over and over to tell Apache to handle different websites. Every web server supports this type of system. Another way to handle this would be to tell the web server to direct all web traffic to one single programming script, i.e. PHP, ASP.NET, etc., and then that single script will determine what website and page to display. <laughs>